love you more than anything. I love my son. Where is my son? I love my son. I love, I love that boy. And I love my daughter. That's my baby. I don't even know how to express how I feel for my children. But I love, I love, I love my children. And 17 years ago, my wife and I, my girlfriend at the time, we stood at 266 Cumberland Street in Brooklyn, New York, and we stood before my pastor who's coming to preach next week. And and we stood before her mother and her sister and my cousin Betty and my cousin James who served as my best man and, and we said that we would be together. We pledged our love for one another through sickness and health, good times and bad times as long as we both live and I love my wife. Amen. I love I love my wife. Five years of my life we served the good people of Bethel Amy Church in Selma. And I love those people in Selma. I really do. I love them still Amen. to this day. And since May 9th, I have been the pastor of Greater Bethel here in Charlotte. And these four months, how many months it is, I have grown to love I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I have, I had two brothers and I have one brother uh, still living and I love my brother. And I have some sisters and we don't always get along. Uh, me and my brothers, we never, ain't nothing with us. We don't never argue. Uh, we never have to. My sisters, good God. But I love my sisters. I love all of them. Even the one that I don't get along with, I still love her. I love my, and I have a bunch of nieces and, and a bunch of nephews, and I look at them as like they're my own children. And I love my nieces, and I love my nephews. It seems like my nieces, though, they have a special place in my heart. I think they play on that. But anyway, I love those children. But more than Kazai and Abdu, and more than Rashida, more than my brother D and all of my sisters, more than the people of Bethel and Selma, more than the people of Greater Bethel and Shaw. If you take all of those people, and that's probably about three, four hundred people, if you take all of them and add it all up, I love God more. <laughs> and because I love him so much, I live by the motto of loving God, loving the people, and doing the work. Amen. I don't just say that. I try to live it. Amen. Let's thank God for this choir. Praise team. It's the praise team. Amen. This is, this is the praise team. Isn't it good that you can praise God no matter what the circumstance? Amen. And these wonderful uh, musicians, our minister of music, ain't he doing the thing? Amen. Amen. Mother Jones, where Mother? Where Mother go? Oh, there she is. All right, Mother Jones. She she making that piano and that that big organ talk, ain't she? Yes. And, and Brother Schaffner, he's strumming them strings, ain't he? Yes. Amen. And 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 my daughter, my baby Christina, she's a drummer. 
And so, and 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 uh, and look, and they're sitting beside each other. They two girl drummers, ain't that something? But in the words of the prophet James Brown, y'all give the drummer song. <laughs> brother, brother Footman, let me journey once again to the book of Job. I said, I said, well, I'm probably not going to preach from Job this week. I'll, I'll do something different. But the Lord took us there again, and I can see through the uh, music ministry that we are in line with the Holy Spirit. Amen. A journey with me to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. And, and I always um, date my messages. Um, so I know if I preach it again, I know how much time I need before y'all forget. And so... I have on here birthday sermon. And so I, I, I think this one is for me, but when I look around the room, I think God is speaking to some of you as well. Amen. But in Job chapter 23, beginning at verse 8 through 10, it says, if I go forward, he is not there. If I go backward, I cannot proceed. On the left he hides and I cannot behold him, so I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come out like gold. Sister Tamara likes to read from the message Bible. And so I don't want Sister Tamara to be lost. So Sister Tamara's Bible says, I traveled east looking for him. I find no one. Then west, but not a trace. I even go north, and he's hidden his tracks. And then south, not even a glimpse. But he knows where I am and he knows what I've done. He can examine me all that he wants and I'll pass the test with honors. I followed him closely, my feet in his footprints, not swerving from his way. I've obeyed the words he's spoken. And not just obey them, but I treasure his advice. Amen. The word of God for his people. And I just want to talk today, even though I can't see him, I know he's there. Right. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, even though I can't see him, I know he's there. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you. God, use me to preach. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. To Mother Brown and Mother Bird and all of these preachers, amen. All of these preachers. Have you ever had an experience or an unexplained event to happen in your life and it blessed you? It's one of the occasions where a blessing came your way without any effort on your part. It came just at the right time that you needed it to come. And the only thing you could do was stop and say, praise the Lord. There are some who have unexplained reversals of a medical condition. I just got a text message that said that uh, Reverend Jones is comfortable, calm, and doing just fine. Amen. The doctors may say one thing, but later the condition was reversed, leaving the doctors scratching their heads. You were not in line to receive the opportunity. But somehow an opportunity you never thought would happen suddenly appeared out of nowhere. 
somebody told me that after 10 years of ministry, 10 years of pastoral ministry, it's not your time. It's not your turn to be the pastor of Greater Bethel. And then they said, but you know what, Reverend? It might not be your turn, but it's surely your time. You may have been involved in an accident that should have been fatal. Where's Sister Price at? But you survived with only scratches and bruises or even sometimes no scratches at all. How did these things happen? We know that God works in the background of our lives and he does these things to ensure that we accomplish our life's purpose. We who have told God that we will follow him and that we will help in the establishment of God's kingdom, we have the assurance that he is working to open doors that have been shut to us and he is working to create doorways that don't even exist to help us achieve his purposes in our lives. And often we won't see the hand of God operating, but even though we don't see it, he is there. God is behind us and we don't see him. God is in front of us and we don't see him. God is on our left and we don't see him. God is on our right and we don't see him. But those who are outside of the faith, they may not recognize the hand of God. But we who know God, we know how God works. God's unseen hand guides and controls. God's unseen hand tears down and builds up the unseen hand of God is called his providence. The will of God working itself out among us. We know the power of God is working every day even though we cannot see his hand directly, we feel God's presence. Well, I'm reminded of a story of a pimp and a pastor. The pimp drove the souped up Cadillac Sun rooftop, diamond in the bank, digging in the scene with the gangster white walls, TV antenna. What y'all know about that? Well, this pimp was driving this souped up Cadillac and he ran a red light and he smashed into the Hyundai driven by the pastor. So the two cars, they crashed and airbags were deployed and both cars were completely destroyed. And the pastor said, Lord have mercy. There's no way that I can prove that this pimp ran the red light and caused the accident. And I'm probably going to end up with the ticket and my insurance is going to go up and I'm going to have to hear Rashid, I mean the first lady's mouth. <laughs> So after a few minutes, the pimp and, and the pastor stepped out and they looked at the cars and the pimp said to the pastor, hey man, I, I remember you from back in the day. We grew up together in the hood and both said how amazing it was that they survived this crash without either of them getting a scratch. So the pimp said to the pastor, this must be some kind of sign that there is a blessing in this somewhere. And the pastor said, look at both of our cars, completely demolished, but we are unscratched, and that is a blessing. In fact, everything about the car was torn up, except in the back of the pastor's car, there was a bottle of communion wine, and the bottle didn't even get touched. And so the pimp saw it, and he said, pastor, that's a sign and we should celebrate so let's have a drink so the pastor passed the bottle of communion wine to the pimp and the pimp popped the top and he drank half the bottle and then the pimp gave the bottle back to the pastor and he was surprised when the pastor put the top back on the bottle and the pimp looked at the pastor and said, aren't you going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord? And the pastor said, no, I think I'll wait for the police. 
then I'll celebrate. In this case, the blessing was the unopened bottle of communion wine. Well, even in our sickness and even in times of trial, we know that God is still operating. That's why we never lose hope. Even when hard times come because we know that God is working the hard circumstance in a way that will accomplish his purpose for our lives. And that's a good thing. That's why we should not look to commit suicide. That's why we should not look at suffering sustained periods of depression or resorting to alcohol or resorting to drug abuse when things go wrong. We need to endure the moment knowing that God is working even in troubling situations and in the end we will arise as pure gold. We are assured that God will be there for us in any situation. He will tell us what to do and he'll tell us what not to do. He will open doors and he will shut doors. He will make things happen. He will stop things from happening. But whatever he does is always to our advantage. We won't see him when it's done. But we'll know after it's done that it was God that made it happen. Now in this text we see. Job's response to the troubled circumstances in his life and expressing faith that his situation would be reversed even though he didn't know how he knew that he would come through it as pure gold and we've already established that week after week we say that Job was a righteous man he was a good man he faithfully subscribed to the laws of God and he lived by the principles of God every day and the Bible described Job as a righteous man who never once broke God's law but he fell on hard times anyway he was an obedient man he was a faithful man but yet he fell upon hard times and his faithfulness was tested by God to show Satan that regardless of what misfortunes come his way regardless of what would happen he would not forsake the faith and he would remain obedient to God no matter how dark the day no matter how tough the storm so Satan caused numerous difficulties and to come in Job's life his health was failing he was sitting there a pitiful looking sick man with boils all over his body all of his wealth were gone and his children had died and all he had was his, was his wife and she was going through what she was going through and she told him why don't you just curse God and die and then his friends who were supposed to comfort him they came and they sat with him for seven days in mourning and then when they began to talk it's like they should have shut up and here he is with these growing number of frustrating and debilitating circumstances. But in spite of all of that, Job hung to his faith and maintained that he would not abandon his faith. He would not drop to the level of cursing God. He would not drop to the level of questioning God. He would not drop to the level of doubting God's goodness. So in this text, Job told his friends who sat with him and, and he looked to the left and he looked to the right. He said he looked up high and he looked down low and he could not see God's hand in his situation. But in spite of him not seeing God, he knew that God was aware of his situation and that somehow, even though he couldn't understand it, somehow, even though he couldn't explain it, somehow, God was probably involved in it. He says he knows the way that I take. In other words, he says he knows that I'm a good man. And he knows that when he finishes testing me, that I will come through as pure gold. Job's assurance that God is aware of his faith and aware of his lifestyle and commitment to his service is underscored by the reason that he felt assured that God would turn his situation around. And in the end, God did just that. Amen. He turned his situation and Job came through as pure gold. Yeah. But there are many ways that God has moved on our behalf in the past. And greater Bethel, 
He'll do it again. And just as he's been good to us in the past, just watch what he's going to do in the months that are ahead. So let me share with you three quick points and I'll be out of your way. First of all, he has provided for us. We didn't see him do it, but we know it was God that provided for our essentials over the past year. Though we may have complained about some of our food or we may have complained whether our clothes, clothes were fashionable or the size or location of our homes and most of us would have to agree that God was faithful in providing us with all three. And even while God held back the demons of hell that were seeking to destroy us, he kept providing for our essentials at the same time. And even in moments of our unfaithfulness, it turns out that God was still working. God was putting people and God was putting resources in our lives to help us respond to our problems. We don't know how we stumbled upon the people who helped us, but we should have some idea. Was it by chance that you met the man or woman or group that responded to your need? Was it by chance that the opportunity that you needed to keep you from drowning in your troubles happened just as you needed it? Did the lifeline that kept you afloat throw itself or was there an unseen hand on the other side throwing it out to you? If you look to the left or you look to the right, you may not see him. But no matter what the circumstance that we may encounter, God is there somewhere and he's working it out for our advantage. Well, he not only has provided for us, but Brother Hazley, he's also opened some doors. Amen. We look to the left and we look to the right and we don't see him. But we know that it was God who opened doors that had once been shut in our face. Not only has God opened doors for us, but He's held them open long enough for us to get through and then close them to keep our enemies from following. That's what he did for Israel as they crossed the Red Sea. He held back the waters long enough for them to get through and then close it on those who were trying to kill them. God has been faithfully opening doors for us. God has faithfully given us opportunities for abundant life. And when we look back over the last few years, some of us have done more than just survived. We have improved our spirituality. We have improved our financial conditions. We have been improved in our family relations. Some have expanded our borders over the last years, taking advantage of every opportunity God made available for us to grow spiritually and for us to grow materially and us to grow, grow financially and for us to grow mentally. There are many who have experienced stronger family relationships in addition to a better quality of life and it cannot be ignored. We look to the left and we look to the right and we don't see him but we know that God is there in the middle and because he's in the middle he's making things happen for us. Well he has provided for us and he has opened doors for us but he's also provided for our spiritual support when our spiritual strength was at its lowest the hymn writer said that God lifted me we didn't see it but we know that he was there somewhere and while he was there on on sight unseen for us he was working things and he was talking to us directly in prayer and he was talking to us directly through God's people he was talking to us directly through the preached word we heard his voice in the sermons and we heard his voice in the phone calls of friends and we heard his voice in the scriptures that we choose to read we heard his voice in our early morning scriptures that we received we heard his voice in the songs that the choir sings we did not see God in the months we did we may not have seen God in the months after our loved ones died but sister Sharon Marianna we know that he has lifted us out of our depression and he has given us a new purpose we did not see God when we suffered a setback and when we lost ground on our journey but we know that he was there because he
he kept sending us so many messages to get up, keep moving, try it again. There are some families that have sunk to a spiritual low only to be renewed by the voice of God constantly speaking to them. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, let me tell you what David said. David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the one who made the heavens and the earth. I think that's what the songwriter had in mind when he was talking about Jesus. And he said, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The Son of God discloses. You might think you're by yourself, but the hymn went on to say, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known well as I take my seat we must remember that just as we did not see God move on our behalf last year and just as we felt his actions he will be doing the same in the days ahead whatever we might expect to face in the coming year we should be encouraged to know that God is already in front of us he's scouting out our future we don't know what tomorrow will bring but I know what God did for me yesterday and I know what God is doing right now and I know that he's already ahead of me making a way for me I don't know how long it will be or what the future holds for me but this one thing I know if Jesus leads me I'll make it home one day yes it doesn't matter what the future brings as long as we're on the Lord's side and if we're on the Lord's side there'll never be a cross that we cannot bear there'll never be a mountain that we cannot climb there'll never be an enemy that we won't be able to defeat there'll never be a battle that we won't win there'll never be darkness that will tempt you to light there'll never be a trial that we can't make it through there'll never be a test that we won't pass brother Derek Myrick the Lord is a bridge over troubled waters say yes the Lord protects us from our enemies in behind and he opened doors ahead of us the Lord hold back the hounds of hell and makes new possibilities every day the Lord holds back the demons of destruction and he unlocks new opportunities along the way the Lord is our foundation he's our hope for a future I heard the songwriter say the only hope we have is in Christ Jesus confusion is great in the world today persecution may come with a heavy weight but we have this hope and this hope is in Jesus Jesus somebody here today knows him Jesus he's a lily of the valley Jesus he's the bright and morning star Jesus Jesus I'm talking about Mary's baby Jesus who bled who suffered and who
sing like that in Charlotte. They didn't. That's what they sang in Johnston County. They, didn't. they ain't sing like that in Charlotte. But they say, God's not dead. He's yet alive. And then, then they would say, I can feel him in my hands. And then they would say, I can feel him in my feet. And then it would get so good to them. They say, I can feel him all over all over me well y'all y'all help me y'all y'all help me help me shake that and if you can feel him in your in your hands just wave your hands and then if you can feel him in your in your feet just just move your feet and if you can feel him all all over you move your body y'all take us to the old time Pentecostal church
to me. That felt good to me. I can't see him. But I know he's there. I've looked to the left and to the right and to the north and to the south. I could not lay my eyes on him. But I felt him. I know he's there. Amen. 